Are there any questions concerning the report? There are no questions. There are no questions. Thank you, Dr. Hawkins. Let's thank the Lord again for him. The introduction of business is now in order. If you make a motion, please give a written copy of it to the page at your microphone so that they can bring that to the platform. Be sure when you make a motion to state your name, the name of your church, and uh, that, the, uh, that it is attached to your motion. Under the rules, all motions are referred to the committee on order of business. Please note that at this time it is in order to make motions but not to debate them. Microphone 1A, would you please state your name, your church, and your motion. Brent Lay, Messenger for Inglewood Baptist Church, Jackson, Tennessee. Mr. President, in that thousands of SBC churches are predicted to close their doors just in the next few years, I move that we request our executive committee to explore and study any and all strategies involving a promotional effort to encourage churches to reach out and rescue and possibly adopt those churches in need and for the executive committee to make a report or a recommendation concerning such at our 2018 convention. This is a request for promotional or publicity effort as allowed under bylaw 18 subsection 8 and is not a request to administer a program. Is there a second to this motion? All right. Please give a copy of your motion to a page and bring it to the platform. Microphone 1B. Good State morning, you. Mr. President. My name is Wiley Drake from the First Southern Baptist Church of Buena Park, California. In keeping with your theme and our theme of prayer, and in keeping with the Senator Trent Franks from Arizona, in keeping with the Senator from Colorado, Senator Doug Lamburn, who have entered into Congress the record to support prayer, I make a motion that the messengers serving the Southern Baptist Convention meeting June the 13th and 14th in Phoenix, Arizona, support spiritually the call to fall repentance prayer meeting that can be found at call and the number two fall dot com and I ask if someone gives a second on that we'll discuss it later is there a second to the motion is there a second to the motion yes okay Please give a copy of your motion to a page and bring it to the platform. Microphone 6A. Microphone 6A, would you please state your name, your church, and your motion? My name is David Bernstein. My church is Desert Ridge Baptist Church in St. George, Utah. I move that the North American Mission Board, International Mission Board, and Lifeway be respectfully requested to follow the example of the SBC Executive Committee by voluntarily amending their governing documents to include on their boards of trustees representation from each Southern Baptist State Convention in the SBC contributing to our SBC missions and causes through the cooperative program. Is there a second to this motion? All right, would you please give a copy of your motion to a page and then bring that to the platform? 7A, microphone 7A. Microphone 7A, would you please state your name, your church, and your motion? Microphone 7A. Microphone 4A, would you please state your name, your church, and your motion? My name is Steve Bailey. I'm a messenger from the Calvary Baptist Church in Oceola, Arkansas. I'm requesting the 
Bylaw 10C be amended to require all nomination speeches for officers of Southern Baptist Convention to include a percentage of proctor program gifts given by each nominee's church. Such an amendment would clarify the actual percentage any candidate's church gives to support the work of our convention. This will be a standard by which messengers to the annual meeting will be able to compare and contrast candidates or qualifications and the actual support of the convention, whereby putting all the candidates on equal footing. Simply giving dollar amounts of the overall mission spending is not a clear picture of their commitment to convention causes and also very deceiving. To state you're going to increase your CP giving by a dollar amount is sidestepping the percentage issue. I understand for those who receive it, the amount of state in the SBC life concerning known nominees. If someone is nominated from the floor of the convention, that individual's information will not be posted in SBC life. For all nomination speeches, even if stated in SBC life, the percentage amount must be verbally stated. We as convention have the right to know who is and who is not supporting the culture program in percentage giving. We read in Luke 12, 48, For unto whom much is given, of him much shall be required. Of whom men have committed much, of him they will ask some more. By stating the percentage amount given to the culture program and nomination speeches places every SBC church, small or great, on a large, even playing field. I urge adoption of this motion. Is there a second to the motion? All right. Please give a copy of that motion to a page and please bring it to the platform. 2A, 2A. Microphone 2A, would you please state your name, your church, and your motion? Mr. President, my name is James Forbes. I'm the messenger from and associate pastor of the First Baptist Church of Willow Springs, Missouri. I move that we, the messengers of the 160th session of the Southern Baptist Convention, adopt an orphan and widow care Sunday in the 2018 calendar in the spirit of James 127, which reads, religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from their world. This could coincide with Mission Dignity's centennial anniversary in 2018, in which we as autonomous member churches would devote a portion of our offering specifically to the work of state convention supported widow and widower care, and also a portion to state convention specific Baptist children's homes. As Christians, it is our responsibility to see that no child passes through their life without hearing the gospel, and foster care and adoption is an important means by which we can do this. With over 400,000 orphans without a forever family, it is high time we as Southern Baptists answered the call and officially promoted the fostering and adoption of these precious souls. As Christians, it is our responsibility to see that no widow or widower within our church is continually suffering, and especially we are to give honor where honor is due to former pastor's wives and pastors who are suffering from disease and stricken with disability that force them to be homebound without means to a respectable quality of life. Is there a second? Thank you so much. If you would please give a copy of your motion to a page and bring that to the platform. Ask, are there any further motions? Are there any further motions? Okay. Uh, turn the page and go to the crossover events. This time we'll go to the crossover Evangelism Report. Joel Sutherland, Executive Director of Evangelism. North American Mission Board will be leading in that along with Eddie Pearson, Evangelism and Discipleship Facilitator for the Arizona Baptist Convention in Scottsdale, Arizona. Thank you, Dr. Gaines. This year, the North American Mission Board embarked on a historic partnership with Harvest America to bring Crossover Arizona to the Phoenix area. Instead of doing many small events around the city, we put together one large evangelistic event at the University of Phoenix Stadium. The partnership with Greg Laurie and Harvest America allowed us to have a momentous evangelistic impact here in the city and at Crossover. Here are some of the details. 38,000 people were in attendance Sunday night. People from 83 different countries watched the video online. Over 120,000 people watched the Facebook Live video. The Facebook reach was almost one million people. 
We had 425 local area churches participating with over 5,000 volunteers. At the stadium on Sunday night, there were 2,904 professions of faith. There were 494 online professions of faith. At the Saturday night pre-event, with almost 1,000 people hitting the streets to share the gospel, they saw 79 professions of faith. And our seminary crossover students saw 72 professions of faith. Overall, the total professions of faith at crossover is 3,549 to God be the glory. Every profession of faith has already received a letter in the mail and has been assigned to a local church for follow-up. I'd like to say thank you to the 425 local churches and the thousands of volunteers who made this possible. Thank you to the seminaries for bringing 132 students to go door-to-door -door all week, and to Greg Laurie, John Collins, and Scott Candom, and the entire Harvest team for their partnership. Also, I would not have been possible without the cooperation and partnership of the Arizona Baptist Convention, their executive director, David Johnson, and their evangelism director, Eddie Pearson. I'd like to recognize Eddie Pearson now to give a word of thanks from Arizona churches and the Arizona Convention. On behalf of Dr. David Johnson and Arizona Southern Baptist, thank you, SBC family, for your, for your support in helping us with Crossover and Harvest America. Also, thank you to this guy behind me, Joel Sutherland, our national evangelism leader, for your courage to bring a fresh approach to Crossover and really the largest block party I've ever been to, filling a, filling a football stadium. It's pretty cool. Um, you also helped our SBC seminaries, and we appreciate it. Thank you, Southern Baptist, and God bless you all. In 2018, we will be in Dallas, Texas, and Crossover will be a harvest event at AT&T Stadium. Consider this to be an invitation to your church to be part of that event. The crusade will take place on Sunday night with pre-events Friday and Saturday. It would be a great opportunity for a mission trip for your youth, college students, or your church. Stay tuned to nam.net slash crossover for further details. To finish up my presentation, we have a short video with a few highlights from Crossover Arizona. and he can change your life, and he can do it right now. This is your moment where your life can change. This is your moment where your eternal address can change literally from hell to heaven. This is the moment when Christ can come and live inside of you. He's only a prayer away. Mr. President, that concludes my report.